Hello everyone, Festina here. In this video, we are going to take a complete walkthrough of the Power App Studio. For that, let's get started by creating a blank canvas app. Let's click on Create. What you see here is the studio and this is the development environment for building custom apps in Power Apps. On the top hand left side, what you see here is the Power Apps modern command bar. The insert menu is something which we will use very often in our day to day development in Power Apps. Clicking on that will show us what all objects and controls we could possibly add on to the canvas over here. And you could see a lot of popular controls on the top, and we have a lot of input controls like text input, drop down, date picker. You also have a lot of display controls to display your data like your text labels, HTML text and so on. We can add containers, galleries and media controls like audio, video, images and we can also add icons, shapes and charts to our app. Now there are two options to add these controls to the app. Either you click on that and it gets added to your app directly or if you would like to put a control in a particular place, you can actually drag and drop it over here. So this way, we can add controls to our screen. Another interesting thing about this command bar is that based on which object or control you're choosing, the options that it provides for customization changes. For instance, right now I have clicked on the text input and I can change the font of the text input. I can make it bold. I can change the color. So these things can be done from the command bar. Right now, I haven't clicked on it. I have clicked on the screen and you can see that the option has changed. Now it gives us options like what is the theme and what is going to be the background color of the screen? Are you going to set up any image for the screen? So this way it customizes the options based on which control you have chosen. The next thing that we're going to talk about is add data. This is the place where we will be adding our data sources to the app. You see a lot of data sources here like Dataverse, Office 365 connectors, SharePoint, Excel, and so on. For now, I will show you as an example of how we can connect to a data source. I'm going to search for SharePoint. Here, you can put in the SharePoint URL. Or if at all it shows up in the recent sites, you can access from that. Once you choose a site, it's going to show you what all libraries and lists it contains. And for now, I'm going to choose the students list over here and click on connect. And we can see it over here, just like how we can add it over here. On the left pane, the third option, you have data. You can also add your data sources from here. And one thing to note here about the data sources is that whenever you are making changes in the data source after you have connected it to your app, like you are adding three columns, you have added some 50 records to your data source. While you are in edit mode, the app is not really going to know the changes. So what you can do is you need to do a refresh on your data source so that your app knows exactly what is the latest data in the data source that you have connected to. And along with that, there is an option to edit data. Clicking on this is automatically going to open the SharePoint list for us for editing it directly. And clicking on this is going to remove the SharePoint list connection from this app. Clicking on this is going to remove any data sources that have not really been used in the app. For instance, I'm going to click on it now because I have added the SharePoint list. I haven't really used it. And this is going to remove it directly from the app. So that's gone. Next, we're going to move to the screen section. And this is the new screen section. Clicking on that is going to show you different kinds of layouts which you can choose from for creating a new screen. Either you can go for a blank screen and create everything from scratch or you can choose the screen so that you have a separate container for creating a left navigation menu and you have a header section where you can put up your banner or header and you have a main content section wherein you can create all of your main contents in the app. You can explore them going one by one. Let's say as an instance, you have submitted a form and you want to tell users that they have successfully submitted the form. In that case, you can use the success screen, for instance. This is how it comes up. Another point about screens that I want to talk about is if at all you are creating a screen from any of the screen templates provided here and that screen essentially requires some data source to be added, Power Apps automatically connects to those data sources. For example, let's connect to this email screen. So that's going to create a screen specifically for sending a new email. And if you see on the left pane, it automatically connected to Office 365 Outlook and Office 365 users. 
That's a great way of integrating your screens with data sources as per the requirement. And that's all about screens based on how you would like to design your apps, create your screens. And the next section is the theme. This is pretty cool. So based on your organization and what branding and colors that you are using, you can go ahead and create your theme. For now, you can see that the theme is set up to be blue. I can change that to coral and this entire theme of the app is going to change to coral. Not just the screen, all the screens are going to be changed to this. Like for example, you see on screen two, the color has changed and screen three, the color has changed. That's all about themes. And you have the background color. If at all you want to set some color to be the background of your screen, you can go ahead and choose the background color. And I'm going to choose, for instance, this one over here. And the entire color of the screen changes. Same way, if you do not want to use a color and you want to come up with an image as a background for your screen, go ahead and use this. In this place, you can either upload your own images or you can choose an image from the stock images. For example, let me choose this one and click on insert. There you go. You have a new image as your background. But right now, the position of this image is set to be fit. You can change the position of the image to be fill so that it expands over your entire screen. And that looks pretty good right now. This is all about the Power Apps mode on command bar. We're going to talk about the app action section. And first of all, we have the comment section. When we are working on an app and we would like to receive feedback from our team members, this is the place to go. They can add their reviews or feedbacks of the app over here. Or let's say we have created a version of the app and then we have made changes and created another version of the app. In that case, we can also mention whatever changes we have made in this section. I will just add comment for example and that is how it shows up we have the app checker part and this is the place where we will be able to see all the errors and warnings in the app any errors or warnings relevant to formulas runtime accessibility performance or data source you can check them in this section as an example let us go to performance here we can see that there are some unused variables there are some unused media files the app checker section pretty much gives us an opportunity to make sure that we get rid of our errors and warnings and have a very good app. We have the share section. We can create an app and share it with users and give them permission as either a user or a co-owner. If at all we are giving a person user access, they will be able to use the app. If at all we are giving someone co-owner access, they can actually collaborate with us, work along with us in the app, edit it, use it, share it but they cannot really delete or change owners. So that's it about the sharing part. Let us go ahead and share the app with one user. I am sharing it with this person and click on share. Once we share it, we will be given a link which we can copy and share with the user. We have to preview the app. You can also press F5 for that. This is the place where we will see how our app is going to be while people actually play and use it. We will be doing all of our testing in this place. And on the right side, you can see how exactly this app is going to be rendered in different devices. I'm choosing this first. This is how it's going to show up in this tablet. I'm going to choose a phone and see how it shows up in a mobile device. That is how it shows up. And finally, we have the browser. We have the save option. Whenever we are making changes in the app and clicking on save, a new version of the app gets saved. The amazing part about this is that if at all, I would like to revert to an older version of the app. I can do that. I want to show you something about the version history. Clicking on the three dots will show you app version history. Click on that. Here you can see how many times you have saved and how many different versions of the app is available. Clicking on see more options for version management will take us to the Power Apps Maker portal. And in here, we will be able to see all the versions. And if at all, I want to go back to an older version. All I need to do is click on this and click on restore. If you would like to save a copy of your app, do the save as. And if you would like to download a copy of the app, you can do that as well. A copy of the app is downloaded to your system. And then on the end, we have the publish option. So unless and until you publish your app, none of the changes that you make in the app will be reflected at the user's end. They're going to see the last version of the app which got published. So anytime you are updating or making changes to the app, 
make sure that you publish your app. I'm clicking on publish and all I got to do is publish this version. That's it. I'm going to talk about this, which is the properties. Clicking on that is going to show us the properties pin. In Power Apps, any object or control that you add, it is going to have associated properties with it. For instance, I have chosen this text input over here and you can see what all properties are associated with it. Starting from the format, whether it is supposed to take text or number, what is going to be the font, what is going to be the size, whether it should be bold or normal, all of these properties you can see over here and this is the properties pane wherein we will be changing the properties. So the properties can be seen not just here. You can also find the properties on the top hand left side in this drop down. Clicking on this drop down will show you every property associated with this control. The box which you see here is the power FX formula bar and for every property what is the value of that property is what is mentioned in this formula bar. And usually a PowerFX function or expression has added here. For now, we have the color as white mentioned for the background of this text input. And I'm going to change that to sky blue and you will see a change in this text input. Color.skyblue and that changes. You can expand and minimize this formula bar and add all of your lines of code over here. So whenever you have a simple value or expression, you can just directly put it over here. Like I'm just changing the size to 24. That is easy. I can do it over here or in the top command bar. But if at all I am writing some function which has like 10, 15 lines, of course, it is a great way to add it in the PowerFX formula bar. And the options here, format text will make it look more neat and clear. So that is about the formula bar. And regarding the advanced option in properties pane, here we have the capability to search for the properties. Let us search for border so that we can check all border relevant properties. Power Apps checks if a particular property contains this keyword. And if it contains, it's going to display all of those properties here. So that's it about the advanced search properties. On the left hand side, what you see is the app authoring menu. And this is the tree view. The reason why it is called a tree view is because Starwood tree branches out into several branches and divisions. Here, every screen expands onto a different set of controls and objects. Under screen three, we have another set of galleries. And once I expand the gallery, I can see a lot of controls inside it. So for every screen, you can see what all objects and controls it contains in the form of a hierarchy. That's all about the tree view. And this is the screen section of it. There is another section called components. We will talk about components in great detail in upcoming videos. But for now, I'll just tell you what is the basic concept of components. Components are pretty much used for reusability. Let's say your company has a specific banner and they have created a banner as a Power Apps component. What happens is people can use that component while they are creating apps. They do not have to build their own banner or header. Instead, they can just add your component onto their app and they can reuse the component which you have built. Anytime you make changes in your parent component, they will be asked in the app, there have been changes over the parent component. Do you want to reflect those changes in your app? If they say yes, all the changes that you have made in the parent component gets updated in the components that they have added in their apps. New screen section over here is the same as what we saw over here. We have the insert section here. This is pretty much the same as exactly what we saw over here. We have the data section. We had a detailed discussion about it already. And after that, we have the variable section. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss about variables and collections in great detail. For now, please remember that this is the place where you will be able to find information about variables and collections. Next, we have the option to search inside the app. With the word that you put in the search bar, you will be able to search for media, text, data sources, formulas, and more. For now, let's try searching for Office. So once I search for office, I am able to see which all data sources contain the keyword office. So we have Office 365 Outlook and Office 365 Users. Same way inside the app, 
in which control and inside which power effects formula do we have this word is what is displayed here. Inside screen 3, inside this gallery, inside items, there is a power effects function which uses the word office. So when we build a huge app with hundreds of controls and formulas, it is a great way to find relevant formulas by using a keyword to search from here. In the media section, we have options to upload from our device. We can upload images, videos, audios, and every other media item here. And you can use those from the media controls in the insert option. You can also use stock images here. And the next one is Power Automate. If you would like to create any automation in integration with Power Automate, this is the place to go. You can either create a new flow from here, or if you have a flow already created, you can add that from the Add Flow section. And the last one is Advanced Tools. You have options to monitor the activities within the app, and also you can write tests to make sure that your app works as expected. Next, we are going to talk about the settings of the app. You can find the settings in two places. In the bottom left corner, you have a settings icon. Clicking on that is going to open up the settings. Or you have the three dots over here. Clicking on that will show you the settings. Click on that. In the settings, we can give a name for the app, a meaningful description of what exactly this app is for. We can also choose an app icon. You can choose the icon from here. And if you would like to have your own images icon, you can also add your image, choose the background fill and color of the icon. So this app icon will show up initially when the app is loading for a couple of seconds. That is a place where you will be able to see the app icon. Let us go to the display settings. Here, you can choose whether the orientation has to be landscape or portrait. Landscape is this orientation and portrait looks like a mobile orientation. I'm not going to change it now, just going to cancel it. You can also choose the size and ratio of your app. You can also choose a custom size for your app. You have a lot more settings like scale to fit, lock aspect ratio and so on. You have the co-pilot section and if at all you would like to connect a custom co-pilot with your app, you can choose that over here. And let us move on to the update section. This is a very interesting setting. So previously in Power Apps, we did not have a default inbuilt option to co-author with our fellow colleagues or employees. It was as if one person can edit the app at a time and the other person tries to edit, it says, the app has been locked by so-and-so. So right now we have this co-authoring feature which enables multiple team members to work on the app together at the same time. And this is really amazing. And if you would like to enable modern controls and themes, you need to switch this on and close it. On the bottom left hand side, you also have a virtual agent. You can ask any common scenarios in real time to the virtual agent and you will get a response. What you see here is the canvas, that is the screen wherein we will be designing our app. And you can actually zoom in and zoom out of it while designing. So make sure that it's pixel perfect and exactly how you intend it to be. What you see here is the screen selector and you can actually switch between screens from here. Canvas apps are a type of power apps and we build these apps on a canvas. That's why they're called so. And they provide us complete control over the user interface. Whatever we create on the Canvas app is going to be pixel perfect as per our design and imagination. If you enjoyed this video, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified on upcoming videos. Thank you.